One of the more common debates, I believe, among a lot of people, mostly families at times, but even friends and co-workers and associates, is the future of media. Now, I'm talking more along the lines of home media. Now, one person that's been very outspoken about it and has basically supported the idea that physical media is not what it used to be and it's essentially on its way out is John Campa. Now, John has a, uh, the John Campa show, and he has a right to his opinion. I'm not denying that. But he's not the only one that believes this. Members of my own family have basically stated the same thing. But why is that? Well, I think it's quite simple. It's because nowadays you have a peripheral of ways of watching uh, content when you want to watch it. You have, of course, your phones. You have, of course, your tablets, your computer, your laptop, up, if you will. Stuff like that. You also have the devices like the Ruko devices, or the Fire TVs, or the Apple TVs. You even have your own game consoles like PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. You have all these different variety of options to watch content on. But here's the thing that some people don't understand. There's a catch to a lot of those services, to a lot of those things that you can watch your content on. There's a catch. The catch basically is the services, like I was trying to say. The services, the streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, you know, you name it. Um, Movies Anywhere, VDU, VUDU, VDU, if, if, you call, if they call it, um, Tubin TV, you name it. There's a peripheral of streaming services that you can watch just about anywhere. But there's a real catch to a lot of them. And that real catch, ladies and gentlemen, is you need a way to watch them, and that way is sometimes either through the internet or through your 4G or 5G services. Now you might say, oh, that's not a problem. You always find, we'll always have those available. Really? Will you have them available? How about the fact that there's going to be a time when you have to pay the bill for one of those services and you can't physically do it and because of it that service gets cut off temporarily. What do you do then? Oh well I can go to my internet use my Wi-Fi right? Okay fine. Okay that's a valued argument there but what about when you're out of town and you're in an area to where you have to rely on 5G or 4G and you can't because you didn't pay the bill. How are you going to watch stuff then? How are you going to keep yourself entertained? Well, are you going to read a book? Are you going to play your Switch? Your, your Switch on the road? What are you going to do? Quite frankly, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Now, if you're on a long trip, yeah, one of the options is to sleep. But what if you don't want to sleep, or you can't sleep, and you want to occupy yourself? What do you do? What if you're in the air, and you lose connection? Now, you might say the airplane's going to have Wi-Fi, probably. But what if the Wi-Fi is not as strong, and they end up in an area in the air that kind of weakens the signal? What do you do then? Well, honestly, you got to find a way to entertain yourself. That's where physical media still comes into play. Yes, it's great. Yes, it's great and it's convenient that we end up being able to utilize the option to watch movies and television shows whenever and wherever we want. Heck, I take the bus to work sometimes and let's say I want to watch, oh, I don't know, an episode of MLP on Netflix. 
but I can't watch it all because I'm on, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting off the bus to get ready to go to work. And let's say I don't want to watch it at work because, you know, I want to probably do a video, probably rest a little bit, you name it. What do I do? Well, it's simple. I either wait to get back on the bus on the right, either get on the bus on the right that takes me home and be able to finish it there, or I wait to get home, settle in, turn on Netflix on my PlayStation 4 or my Ruko device, or even my Xfinity service, and rewatch or finish up watching an episode of MLP. Yeah, I understand, convenient. But again, but again, that's all grand and everything, but what happens if you can't have that service? What happens, ladies and gentlemen, if, let's say for sake of argument, your cable company decides to do maintenance. And when they do maintenance, basically they cut off any signal you have, Wi-Fi, Internet-wise, and you might, now you might say, well, we still have our 4G, 5G services. Okay, fine. But what if, not saying it would happen, but what if conveniently they end up doing maintenance as well? What then? Well, I guess you're stuck watching a physical media, right? Exactly. Look, physical media is still viable. It is still existable. Companies would not be distributing 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays, regular Blu-rays, and regular DVDs to this day, even to this day, if physical media was dying. Yeah, sales may not be as up when some people, some people look at it, but here's another thing you have to look at. Streaming services are, are vulnerable to hack. Hear me out. Yes, it is convenient to be able to watch a movie or a show or play a game wherever you want, when you want, without having to rely on physical disc, media, or even, in this case, a small card. Hard when it comes to the Switch. But the point is, it's nice that all happens, but what occurs, but what do you do if your streaming service is not acting right? And you finally, and you decide to go online and you find out it's been hacked into. And your account might be one of those accounts that it might have been messed with. What do you do then? You might say, oh, well, we have other outlets. Okay, fine. But what if somehow, what if somehow, I should say, basically, someone decides to hack in to all the streaming services. It's not impossible, guys. It's not impossible, and it's bound to happen, and it could possibly happen. Let me remind you of something. Let me remind you of something. Several years ago, a group known as Lizard Squad hacked into not just the PlayStation 4 service, but also the Xbox One service, and I think even the Wii service. All in one day, mostly on Christmas, to prove a point. To prove the point, as ridiculous as it sounds, that if they could do that, then perhaps what Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo should do is hire them on as their technicians. Or whatever the case was. But if they're capable of taking down three services in one day, two to three services, what do you think they're capable of doing when it comes to streaming? Basically, they're capable of taking down multiple streaming services if, they, if a group like that wanted to. And why? Because they know it's more vulnerable to attack than physical media. The point is, look, the point I'm trying to get at is I do agree physical media may not be as popular as it used to be, but it still sells, and people still rely on it. You cannot tell me that they don't. There are some movies and shows that you can only get through purchasing DVDs, Blu-rays, and even, fortunately, sometimes 4K Ultra HD. That's the only way. That's the only way you'll be able to get those 
those shows or those movies because whoever owns the rights to them have yet to take all the episodes and put them into a streaming service. So still, there's always going to be a need for physical media. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know if the Adams Family or the Munsters is on a streaming service. If they are, that's great. If not, guess what? The only way you can get them is through physical media. And those are the original series. Those are the original series. You get what I'm saying, guys? You get what I'm saying? Look, I, I'm not, again, I'm not saying, you know, streaming services, are go the streaming media is out, is going to wipe physical media off the map. I'm not saying that. But I'm not going to bet the whole damn house on it, or a whole damn fortune on it, happening in the next few years. If it happens, you know when I think it's going to happen? i give it another decade and a half if I had to. Another decade and a half to maybe 20 years. In other words, i give it another 15 to 20 years before streaming media becomes the sole distributor and the sole reasoning and the sole outlet for a lot of, of what we see. I really do. I give it another 15 to 20 years. I don't give it five. I don't give it a few. I give it, and I don't give it 10. I give it 15 to 20, 25 at most. Because, what the, it, because here's what's going to happen. During that time, something's going to occur that's going to make people appreciate Blu-ray, DVD, and 4K Ultra Blu-ray DVD uh, disc, I should say, a lot more than they ever have. And during that time, not saying it would happen, but I can almost f sense, almost feel, that what occurred with the consoles, with the PlayStations, the Xbox, and whoever back on Christmas a few years ago, is going to occur with these streaming services. And then that's going to be the wake-up call for the people that run these streaming services that they got to make sure to prevent any hacking or any hacking of any kind from occurring. But at the same time, that's going to be a wake-up call for a lot of people to be like, you know what? Streaming, the streaming options is great, but I'm still going to stick with some physical media because they don't get hacked into so easily. Like I said, it's nice to have media on the go. Be able to watch it when you want. I'm not saying it isn't. The point I'm getting at, though, is you have to be ready. You have to be prepared for possibly something happening to streaming media that's going to make you realize that maybe still having physical media around is good. And besides, thinking of it this way, how do you think physical media is still an option, it's still popular. How do you think that is? Because most movies that get released on 4K, on regular Blu-ray and DVD, have the code for streaming. And people pretty much figure that it'd be, pretty much, people pretty much figure, hey, I'd rather just buy the movie, have a physical copy, as well as have a streaming copy as well. And they all pay the same price that they would online for a streaming version as well. You get what I'm saying, guys? You get what I'm saying? It's nice, like I said, it's nice to have all these new streaming options. Believe me, I enjoy them anytime I get them, anytime I use them. But the point is, we have to realize physical media is not dead yet. And if it ever does come to a point where it will cease to be, I give it another 15 to 20 to maybe 25 years before streaming media really is the main platform. I really do. I really give it that long. Because you know what? Everybody thought vinyl was dead. Record vinyls were dead. Guess what? They're making a comeback. Everybody thought somewhat audio cassette tapes were dead. Guess what? They are somewhat making a comeback. And you know what's even crazier? May not be as noticeable, but VHS is kind of making a comeback, and nobody sees it. Yet. But it is. Point is, physical media is still going to be a viable source. And think about it. It is a studio in a company's overall major financial success point. 
So, in the end, guys, don't count Blu-ray, don't count DVD, don't count 4K, don't count them all out yet. Because they're still going to be around. And think about it this way. Another form of physical media is your SD card. Sometimes when you have the ability to download the movie that you get the code for, or to redeem and have it on your streaming service, and you're able to download it as well, guess where you download it to? Exactly. Thus you have physical media on you anyway. But, I'm just giving my opinion, guys. My thought is I don't think physical media is going to go away anytime soon. So, let me know what you guys think, though, down below. Comment if you like. John Campa, if you listen to this, I want to hear your response, and I'll talk to you all later.